This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys? Vincent here from the creative dojo.net. Welcome to another episode of Dojo TV, a show where we talk about all things motion design and visual effects. So for our first story, we have a tutorial by I Go by Zach. And it's on how to create realistic clear neon tube signs using Cinema 4D and Redshift. Now you can actually take these concepts and actually use them in other 3D applications or 3D renders. So don't think if you don't have Cinema 4D or Retro, you can't follow along. But basically we'll talk about how to use splines to create the overall neon tube shape, how to use fog volumes and materials to create the neon tubes and actually use reference materials and much more. He also provides some cool neon assets that are free to download. So check them out down below. Really cool tutorial by I Go by Zach. Check it out. The next set of news is from the folks over at Insidium, the creators of X Particles and Cycles 4D. And basically they're making great strides to kind of up their GPU game by heavily testing and priming their GPU acceleration into their Insidium Fuse products lines. So basically they announced that they have completed phase one of bringing GPU acceleration into the suite, and they've moved on to phase two to bring on GPU acceleration into XP Fluid PPD, as well as XP Fluid FX. They released this kind of tech preview video to kind of show the differences and some of the speed improvements with the GPU accelerations. They are harnessing the power of Vulkan to achieve faster fluid solves within X particles. And they plan for this update to drop sometime by late summer and will continue to implement GPU acceleration into other parts of their product lines. This is really great news because one of the most common complaints about X particle is its lack of GPU acceleration and the kind of sluggish speed. So I can't wait for GPU acceleration to be more common in the Insidium line. Our next story is about Cavalry, the kind of After Effects competitor app that's been kind of hyped up recently right now if you're talking about motion design. But in the beta version, the folks behind Cavalry kind of introduced some big changes to the app that a lot of geeks like myself will kind of appreciate. And that is kind of the introduction of JavaScript into the application. So with this, you can actually now script and automate a lot of things within Cavalry, which seems to be a lot more robust and easier to do than After Effects, just based on what I'm seeing from the videos and some of the kind of demonstrations. But they even have a video covering how to create and test user interfaces for your scripts in Calvary using script UIs. And remember, this stuff's currently in beta, so some things may have changed. But you can try it out yourself if you're a professional user. Again, I know this app is not really quite there yet if you're trying to replace After Effects completely, but I'm really hoping that this application becomes really well adopted so we can finally see some real competition. And I feel like this is kind of a step in the right direction if they want to create a more competitive environment to compete against stuff like After Effects out there. So we covered Particle Illusion in the past before. There's a paid and free version, but the free version is very, very cool if you don't have a particle system already kind of in your arsenal for After Effects. But I do want to plug in the free training series for the plugin right here. This is a 25 videos covering everything you need to know about Particle Illusion, including the installation, the user interface, creating and animating emitters and node workflows, turbulence, 3D integration, and much more. This series is taught by none other than John Dickinson. And don't forget the standalone version. Again, like I said, it's free. It's easy to use. It's a particle generator with a ton of presets. If you want to use it with the host application integration like After Effects, you need to purchase it separately though. It's still a very good tool for you to get kind of in the world of particles, especially if you're not super knowledgeable in After Effects or have another 3D application. Let's take a quick break and thank our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any code or knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support, and best of all, if you use promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. Now our next two stories is by the folks over at School of Motion. The first video tutorial here is on how to animate a social media post within five minutes. This is more of a kind of a beginner tutorial. I'll kind of show you how to take a basic still image that you typically find posted on social media and add some slight and subtle animation to add that extra eye catching goodness to the post. They'll go over concepts such as picking the right images, separating your layers, importing Photoshop files, animation using stuff like motion tile, adding motion blur and adding realistic shadows and much more. So if you're a beginner to animation, that you want to add some life into your still graphics for social media, this could be a good primer video. Now, speaking of Photoshop, the next tutorial by them is on how to prep Photoshop files for After Effects. So as you know, many people design and conceptualize projects and animations in Photoshop and preparing your files and assets in Photoshop to bring into After Effects can actually be very, very, very cumbersome. So this tutorial will kind of walk you through why and how you should prep your files, how to structure your designs to make the transition a little bit easier, how to identify potential issues that you might run into, and some useful tips for the Photoshop to After Effects kind of workflow. There's a lot of kinks with how these two applications kind of handle files. So it's a really great crash course if you do a lot of work in Photoshop, especially if you are a graphic designer moving into animation. The Pixel Lab recently released a new tutorial on how to render VDB volumes within After Effects 
using Stardust. Typically, you would create these kind of VDB volume files within a 3D application and kind of use them in that system. But by using a particle system like Stardust, you can actually bring those files into After Effects. The Tease Nebula plugin by Video Copa can supposedly do this, um, but it's not released yet. And I think as of right now, Stardust is the only particle system or plugin in After Effects that can actually help you render VDB volumes um, within After Effects. I don't think Particular can do this just yet. And of course, Stardust is very, very powerful. You guys know it has a lot of features. It's very modular, it's node-based, it's something confusing to use, but it is very, very powerful. And you guys already know how I feel about Stardust. There's a cool new little script on AE scripts called FX Stroke Setter by Freemox. And basically it's the missing stroke panel for After Effects. It's a toolbar script for After Effects that allows you to quickly change stuff like your stroke caps, your corners, your alignments. You can add tapers, waves, and, and dashes to your strokes and much more. So if you're a heavy After Effects shape user, you know how annoying it is to twirl down all those little layer contests and groups and drop down menus. It's very, very time consuming. So with this, you can do everything in one click. You can even tie everything together in a single master node controller, control everything all at once. Best of all, it's name your own price. So if you find the tool useful, buy the other a couple cups of coffee or something like that. The last set of news is from our friends over at Action VFX. They have two new tutorials here, how to add explosion VFX into your shots. So you learn how to composite large scale explosion assets, how to color correct these elements to match the original plate, how to enhance the look and feel of the explosion, including how to add smoke trails, using EXR files to do more detailed adjustments, such as creating light wrap and improving the lighting of your explosion to match your shot, and so much more. The second video is about five green screen keying tips. You learn how to combine multiple matte layers to create a more accurate key, how to create a core and edge key layers, how to separate the alpha mat as its own layer, how to properly use masks to kind of patch up imperfect keys, and how to best use other keying methods with green screen keying for your projects. Check it out, really awesome video tutorial down below. So that pretty much wraps up this episode, guys. If you guys like the background music used in this video, I actually got it from Artlist. If you use my link down below, you actually get two months free. Not a sponsor, just kind of want to give them a plug. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm to kind of push this video out to more people. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.